I try not to dive too deep into politics on this channel, but some stories are so heavily tied to politics that it's hard to ignore. And personally, I feel like I can no longer avoid talking about the start of World War III just to protect the feelings of people who may have voted for Kamala Harris. So I'm going to need you all to put on your big boy pants, suck it up, and take a nice big dosage of the truth in this video. Because you see, there's something I've been warning you about for four years, and it is all playing out just as I expected. Now, as you all know, regardless if you like or hate Donald Trump, they tried to lock Donald Trump up and that didn't work. Then they tried to kill him not once but twice. Both attempts failed. And, you know, we've been talking about this for years now. I've warned you all about this, that if Donald Trump won the election, they would purposely throw our country into turmoil just to make him look bad. And that is exactly what is happening. Biden has about, what, maybe 60 days left in office? And now he is escalating the war in Ukraine needlessly for no reason. And I told you, listen, I know I'm a few days rep um, late reporting on this now. But in reality, this is kind of old news to me and a lot of my viewers. You can go back on my channel and look. I already told you, I already reported to you all that Biden had a secret plan to allow Ukraine to use these long-range missiles to attack Russia. I reported to you all about this months ago. Now, he finally went ahead with the plan. I was thinking that he was backing down from the plan because, hey, Donald Trump won the election. And it doesn't make sense to start even more problems to get America even further involved in a war. It doesn't make sense to do that in your last couple of weeks in office. But that's the plan. They couldn't lock him up. They couldn't kill him. So now they hate this guy so much that they're willing to plunge our country into World War III. They're willing to risk millions of lives because that's how much they hate Trump. Now, I don't care if you like Trump or not. I don't care if you voted for him or not, but we have to deal with the truth. We have to deal with facts, and these are the facts. It does not make sense. And giving Ukraine these long-range missiles, it's not like it's going to change the tides of the war. It's not like Ukraine is going to suddenly win this war because they have these long-range missiles. No, the only thing it's going to do is agitate Russia even further. It's going to cause more loss of life because now Russia is going to have to respond in an even harsher manner. And Russia already put it on the table that if the U.S. okays these long-range missiles, because the Ukrainian army, they, they don't even know how to operate a lot of this machinery. They don't know how to operate a lot of these weapons. NATO is operating these weapons. NATO, the U.S. is directly helping and providing these weapons. And Putin already laid it out there on the table. Hey, this is my red line. If you start using these long-range missiles, then guess what? I consider us at war with NATO and the U.S., and we're going to escalate as well. And they already <clears throat> changed their nuclear doctrine. So we are closer to the brink of nuclear war than we ever have been you know, in history. And it's a really scary time, but the media is not giving this the proper coverage that they should be giving it because they don't want make they, they, they don't want to make Biden look bad. They don't want to make that administration look bad. But they've already looked bad for the last four years. And now in a last ditch effort, the last thing Biden's gonna do in office is ensure that America is entrenched in World War III with Russia before he gets out of office. How crazy does that sound? Now, you can't look at that and tell me that's not on purpose. There's nothing drastically going on right now to where Biden had to make this decision a month or so before leaving office. 
He could have left this decision for the next administration, but he didn't want that. He wants to ensure that this conflict is heated up to the next level. And Zelensky in Ukraine, he's eating it up. He, he loves it because he wants to force our hand. He wants to force America to be further involved in this war. That's what he wants. But before I go any further, because listen, I got a lot to say about this topic and I've been biting my tongue for days now. I'm going to roll this news clip and then I'll be right back with more. Turning to Ukraine in a major change of U.S. policy and a reversal of his prior position, President Biden is now allowing Ukraine to use a powerful U.S. missile system inside of Russia for the first time. In April, the U.S. sent the Army tactical missile system to Ukraine after Russian forces crossed the border. Well, since August, Ukrainian leaders have been asking for permission to use the supersonic missile system. In September, Russian President Vladimir Putin called it a red line. But now President Biden is giving Ukraine the green light. News Nation's Alina Shirazi live for us at the White House tonight with how these missiles work and reaction from Ukrainian President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky tonight. Alina. Natasha, good evening. We know that for the first time, President Biden, as you mentioned, did give Ukraine the green light to use American-made long-range missile systems to strike targets inside of Russia. We know this is certainly a bold move for President Biden and could further complicate Russia's war with Ukraine, with the president-elect Trump set to take office in just 64 days from today. Uh, we did hear President Biden speak today from Brazil, but he did not address his authorization and use of U.S. missiles by Ukraine in Russia. We know the announcement comes one day after Biden met with the Chinese president at the APEC summit in Peru. Uh, president Biden notably ignored a question from the media about how the two nations would address North Korea, including reported troops on the front lines with Russia. Uh, but back to the long-range U.S. missile system that Biden approved. We know it's called the Army Tactile Missile System, or ATAC EMS. The U.S. Army says the weapons have a range of up to 190 miles. They are surface-to-surface -surface missiles, meaning they're shot from the ground and can hit GPS-located targets with pinpoint accuracy. We know lawmakers on Capitol Hill are already weighing in. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Turner, a Republican, he praised the move by Biden, posting in part, quote, Ukraine can't properly defend itself if one hand is tied behind its back. Today's news that the Biden administration is finally allowing Ukraine to use some U.S.-provided attack EMS to strike limited targets within Russian territory is long overdue. Again, Zelensky praising the news, saying in part, quote, I am deeply grateful to all our partners who support us with air defense systems and missiles. Every time Russia carries out such attacks, it underscores how critical it is that partners don't leave systems like Patriot and others sitting idle in warehouses, but instead provide them to those who know how to protect lives and urgently need them. But strikes are not carried out with words. The missiles will have to speak for themselves. And News Nation previously reported that the White House also wants to send an additional $9 billion in military aid to Ukraine before President-elect Trump's inauguration on January 20th. We know the United States has already sent more than $64 billion in total of aid to Ukraine since the conflict first started. This Wednesday marks a 1,000 days, we know, in this conflict, Natasha. All right. I'll Ladies and gentlemen, this should be considered a crime against humanity. Biden... And everyone involved, I don't even want to say Biden because he's not the one making these decisions. The people making these decisions need to be held accountable because America didn't vote for this. In fact, America voted for the exact opposite. We voted for no wars. We voted to stop dealing with the issues in Ukraine. We voted to stop interfering in all of these foreign affairs. We voted for America first. We voted to keep America out of World War III. And Biden is going against America right now, going against the majority of voters in America. And he's purposely, or, or whoever's pulling the strings, they're purposely trying to thrust us in this conflict. And then they're going to point towards Donald Trump and say it's Donald Trump's fault. When he's the one, the only one that's been talking about peace solutions. He's already been on the phone with Putin. He's already been on the phone with Zelensky. I'm not saying that, you know, he could stop the war overnight. Like he says, I don't necessarily believe that. 
but he definitely will do a better job than what Biden is doing. And we could find some type of resolution for this conflict because that's what we need to do. We don't need this to involve every country in the world. We don't need an entire world war because of Ukraine. I don't give a damn about Ukraine at all. But I want to be clear here. I'm not picking sides in this conflict. And I would never pick Russia over the U.S. Of course not. But we're being fed a whole lot of lies about this conflict. And at first, I was very scared about what Putin may do. I was scared about what Putin may do at first. And still to this day, I mean, you never know what these people are capable of, right? But I think it's clear that Putin doesn't have the ambitions that NATO accuses him of having. Because we could sit here and we could talk about the war in Ukraine all day. And you could take the Ukraine side and you could think it's cool that we're supplying them with this and that. Listen, if Russia wanted to wipe Ukraine off the map, they could have a long time ago. If Russia really wanted to dominate Ukraine, if they wanted a decisive victory, they could have ended this war a long time ago, folks. That's the reality of the situation. It's a reality that a lot of people are going to have to find out the hard way. In fact, people already are. Because, you know, they authorized Ukraine to use these long-range missiles. And Russia said, hey, if you do that, nuclear war is on the table. But they haven't dropped any nukes yet. But they did send a warning. And boy, oh boy, was it horrific. Look at this video. Look at this. This was Russia's response. I want you to understand that Russia has the weaponry and the technology to wipe out Ukraine fully. But if Ukraine just simply wanted to wipe out Zelensky and the leaders, they could do that too. Russia has the ability to do just about whatever they want to do in this war, but they've been holding back. They have the capabilities to do just about anything to wipe out any of these areas, to wipe out any of these bases, to wipe out any of these leaders. But it seems to me that they've been showing some restraint. And we're basically answering, like, like they're showing restraint on their behalf while we keep escalating. You know, when NATO keeps sending these missiles and this money, we're escalating the conflict, okay? And Russia's trying to use some restraint, but how long will they use that restraint? And you can look at Russia as the big bad guy, and I'm not here to tell you otherwise. But if the shoe is on the other foot, and let's say Russia was sending Mexico missiles to fire at American cities, how do you think we would respond? Really think about that. If Russia sent long-range missiles to Mexico and gave Mexico the go-ahead to use these missiles against American people, and you had missiles shooting from Mexico, blowing up portions of New York City, Connecticut, Texas, California, how do you think we would respond? How would you respond? That's what's happening right now. I feel like we continue to poke the bear and we look around like, hey, look, they're not going to do anything. It's all bluffs. Listen, everyone's bluffing until the bluffing is over. And once the bluffing is over, the bluffing is over and nothing can reverse it. So I think that we need to look for peaceful solutions as opposed to finding more weapons and more things to give Ukraine to needlessly fire at Russia for no reason. Because at the end of the day, Ukraine never had a chance at winning this war. They do not. If you think they do, you're absolutely delusional and you have no idea what Russia has at their disposal. But for now, you guys can let me know what you think about this below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all very soon in the next one.